Hey, welcome back guys. So today I want to talk about uh, what batteries do I recommend for new guys starting off in this hobby. Uh, I've had a few people ask me this question, but it's also a very common question on the forums and really anywhere. And I'm not talking about what brand of battery, what size, the milliamps per hour, the C rating. What I'm talking about is 3S or 4S or even 5 or 6S. I want to go ahead and say that this is just my opinion. Uh, and for those of you that have been in this hobby for a while, leave your opinion in the comment box below. That way, anyone watching this video, they will get a variety of opinions because I don't want anyone just listening to me and thinking, you know, whatever I say is gold. I want everyone to be able to make a decision for themselves because what's best for one guy might be different for the next guy. With that out of the way, uh, I'm going to start off with an analogy because I'm also in the motorcycle racing hobby. Everyone in the motorcycle hobby knows what's known as the three month, well some know it as the three month rule, some know it as the six month rule, but it's the same thing. Uh, and what they mean is everyone recommends starting off, let's just say the Japanese sport bikes, everyone recommends starting off on a 600 because they're slower, therefore they're safer. So a bunch of guys go out and they start off on the 600, but two problems with this. After three to six months, they are already tired of it. Not everybody, 100%, but I would say the majority of guys, uh, after three to six months, they will want more power. And then they end up trading in their motorcycle. And whenever you trade it in, you don't get nearly as much money back as you paid for it. And then they step up to a 1,000, 1,300, 1,400, or whatever it may be. So they end up wasting a lot of money. The second problem I have with that is... Uh, 600s are just as unsafe as any other motorcycle. It does, the motor size has nothing to do with it. It comes down to you and your throttle management. And of course, experience and a bunch of other factors, but that's besides the point. So I think this uh, kind of directly relates to multi-rotors. I can't tell you how many guys I've seen starting off on 3S LiPos, and then, and it's not even, you know, three months to six months. It's more like some people it's as short as a week before they're wanting more power. Uh, you know, so for some people it's two weeks, some it's a month. So say you buy, you know, three to six, three three S lipos at fifteen to twenty dollars each, uh, and you're already wanting more power. Well, you just wasted a lot of money. Uh, so tying back into motorcycles, that's why I recommend starting off on a four S. And it just comes down to your throttle management. Now there's ways and th things you can do to help yourself manage your throttle. The easiest way and the cheapest way is going to be props. How you select them. Uh, you can start off on a 4S LiPo, but get a bi-blade prop instead of starting off on a tri-blade. And also, you know, there's a lot of things that factor into this, like weight, the material it's made out of and things like that but it mostly comes down to the pitch of the blade so say your frame uses five inch props so uh, that's going to be the first two digits of the four digit number which is 50. the second two digits is going to be the angle of the blade and you, this can be 30 35 40 45 i've even seen 50. the less pitch the blade has the less thrust you you're going to have. So say you get a 50-30 prop, that's going to have less thrust. Therefore, that will help you manage your throttle. Where a 50-45 is going to give you more thrust and it's going to be harder to control, uh, especially when you're just starting off. And uh, but the point I'm trying to make is swapping out props and trying out different combinations of props is a lot cheaper than trying out some 3S and some 4S, or buying a bunch of 3S and eventually moving up to 4S. You can just move up props. Start off on 50, 30, work your way up to, you know, 35, 40, 45. Once you, uh, you know, feel like you want more thrust than a 50, 45, then switch to a 50, 30 tri-blade. And then once again, work your way up from there. The next thing you can do is uh, your settings in Betaflight. I want to come back to the rates, but first let's just talk about throttle. If you come down here to throttle mid, uh, and this doesn't just apply to beta flight, this also works with clean flight, INAV, race flight, any of them. But let's just say we set the throttle mid and expo to zero. 
we see this line is very linear. This means that with your throttle, this is going to be 0%, this is going to be 30, 50, 75, and 100. Wherever you put the stick, you know, that percentage of throttle you were using, that's how much throttle is actually making it to your motors. The thing you can do is find out at what percentage of throttle your multi-rotor hovers at. You can use an on-screen display, and uh, a lot of on-screen displays have the throttle percentage, you know, or position on your on-screen display. You can use that to get an exact number, or you can just eyeball it. I mean, just have your multi-rotor hovering, and notice where your throttle stick is, the position of it is. So, you know, this would be about 25% this would be about 30%, you know, this is 50. Take that percentage and say uh, our multi rotor hovers at 30%. So we're just gonna enter 0.3, that would be 30%. Notice the line didn't move, that's because we have to change the expo. Uh, let's just say we want 50% expo, so we do 0.5. Notice how the line changed. Now I'm gonna set this to one, but I do not recommend an expo of one I'm only doing this to give you like a visual demonstration. Uh, so we set the throttle mid at at 30%, our multi-rotor will hover, and 30% is going to be right here where it levels off. But say we uh, increase throttle by 10%, so on the stick, on our transmitter, we are now at, well hell, let's just say 20%. So the throttle is now at 50%. But instead of actually having 50% throttle going to the motors, if we look right in the dead middle, because this is zero, this is 100, 50% throttle is actually, you know, if this is zero and this is 100, that's actually 40%. And with your stick at 20% on your transmitter, that's actually maybe, you know, 26, 27%. Point that I'm trying to make is, this will help you manage your throttle because you can have more movement and not as much throttle increase or decrease so it just makes you know life a little bit easier i know that's a horrible way of explaining it i really have no other way so i apologize for that i hope you understand what i'm trying to say with throttle mid and throttle expo both set at zero i mean you can just barely move your throttle and it's going to increase or decrease throttle and the higher cell lipo you're using the more it's going to jump up and down so if you know just the smallest touch on a 6s lipo battery that's your multi rotor is literally literally going to jump and like i said with 4s it is worse than 3s and that's why a lot of guys recommend starting off on 3s but the throttle expo and mid does help um, I would say maybe start off at 0.5 and adjust from there. Either increase it or decrease it, however you like it. And this isn't just something for new guys. This is something that I actually do on my multi rotors. I actually use a 0.3 and 0.3, and this helps me manage my throttle. Say I'm trying to small through a really small hole, or right in between some tree branches that are really close together, or anything like that, and I need some really good throttle control. I have it, this is why I use it. And no matter what you set both of these at, you are still going to get 0% throttle and you will still get 100% throttle. Only difference is you get more throttle control around that hovering area. Now as far as uh, your rates, uh, whichever configurator you're using, they're all different, but I mean, it's basically the same setup, they just call it different names. With Betaflight, it's gonna be your super rate. I think the default is like 0.7, I can't remember, but once again we get a nice little graph over here, and say we do, notice the red line right here. This means that it will flip, or it's going to roll at 1543 degrees per second. If you set this to the default, it's now 646 degrees per second. So it's going to uh, roll much slower, and you can do this with pitch and yaw as well. The other thing is, you also have an RC Expo, and this works exactly like Throttle Expo. If we set this to zero, so we see the lines are kind of, you know, graduated up, but uh, let's just do like a, you know, like a 0.5 or something. So just like your Throttle Expo, 
what this line means is uh, with your stick centered and let's just say I'm going to do the uh, roll and pitch at 0.5 that'll be a better example so what this means is you can move your roll for example a good amount and it's going to it's still going to turn and roll but once you get closer to the ends it's going to jack up and that's where you see this line just kind of take off right there so by decreasing your super rate and also increasing your RC Expo, this is going to give you a lot more control as far as roll, pitch, and yaw. And then you have your throttle on a separate deal over here. And that's pretty much it, guys. So like I said, uh, anyone else that may have a different opinion, I don't even care if your opinion is the exact opposite of mine. Just leave it in the comment box below. That way anyone watching this can get, you know, they can make a decision for themselves. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you again soon.